evening, good afternoon, good night. I'm Black Bright and welcome to my channel. Here's the first time you're passing through. Then touch the like button if you like the content. Share it if you think it would be useful to someone else. And subscribe if you'd like to know more about being notified every time I put up a channel. Um, I tend to be quite... Um, I'm inconsistent with the way I broadcast my channels. Um, sometimes I do quite a few and sometimes I go quiet. It all depends what's happening in the newspaper and what information I'm being asked to share. Now there's a lot been going on about this amnesty and I only did um, one about the amnesty very recently. But since then I've been listening and I've been watching and I've come up with a few ideas. Remember they're just my opinion, it's not a state of fact. But I was thinking that with regard to Boris Johnson talking about the amnesty or offering amnesty to 500,000, um, I was listening to a program where people were calling in and saying, do you think he's really going to give amnesty? Let's pray for him to give amnesty and all this kind of stuff. I mean, anything that's too good to be true usually is. That's my motto. And that's the first thing I'm going to say, because... Uh, you know, when the, um, the word amnesty comes out, it gives you the um, feeling that you're going to be pardoned. You know, everybody, all the illegal immigrants and the way the papers put it about, oh, you know, if it's going to cost public, um, the taxpayers, you know, I don't know how many billions it's going to cost them, you know, to have all these illegal immigrants. The thing is, is that if they listen to the key words of what Boris Johnson says, and you must also listen, don't just listen to the word amnesty and let it detract you from the substance of his conversation. Because what he's saying is only those who have been legally in the country and who have you know, who have a squeaky clean record and who have not fallen foul of the law. And what was he was saying? Uh, if you have played by the rules. The thing is, for those who have not played by the rules, you're not going to be in any better position than you are now, amnesty or no amnesty. Because playing by the rules could mean that you... You shouldn't have overstayed. Um, it could mean that the slightest misdemeanor is going to flag you. And it could mean a lot of things. Playing by the rules means not getting yourself in any form of trouble. So who is this amnesty for then? If it's not for all the illegal immigrants in quotes. Well, illegal immigrants or undocumented immigrants, I don't I think there is a slight distinction. Are those people probably from my from the way he said play by the rules, are those who've been caught in some kind of net, whether it's through the windrush or through uh, mistakes from the home office, and who are actually here legally? but who are going through an application process already paid, you know, already paying or have paid for visa applications. They're actually in the country legally, but they're not being processed or they their application has not been processed through no fault of their own. So I believe, and also it'll be those um, young children, or not young children, they're probably adults now, but those who were born post-1983, who got caught up with the 1981 Act, as I said in an earlier video, and who um, and whose parents didn't register them, and now they're adults, they're finding it difficult to register themselves without relative paperwork. So it's more likely to be those who are applying for um, limited, you know, in limited leave to remain, discretionary leave, any one of those leave to remain, even indefinite leave to remain, they could get nat naturalised through amnesty. So there's no point jumping up and down and thinking all illegal immigrants are going to get by. That is not what's going to happen. You know, number one, 
you know, a lot of people have called, you know, have got at least one misdemeanor. And if you've got one misdemeanor, if you've got anything on your records, you, you're, you're, it invalidates you, it disqualifies you. So this is not, you know, a free for all. Amnesty is, it gives the impression that every illegal immigrant, regardless of what they've done, they're going to be pardoned. The word 500,000 is being bantered around and make it look like, oh, what's Boris, got, what's Boris Johnson doing? You know, allowing all these illegal immigrants in to, to use our public services and to use, it's just winding people up. And also it could be to get the immigrant vote. Because you know how many immigrants would be voting for Boris Johnson if they know, they, if they believe the concept of amnesty is for every illegal immigrant, regardless of what they've done. So you have to hone into the, what I call the small print, the little words that mean so much. And in his, and in his defense, it's playing by the rules. He just skips over it, glosses it very quickly, but that is the key phrase that determines who is going to get amnesty and who is not. So if, you're, if you've come over into the country and you're undocumented and you haven't um, notified the Home Office of a change of circumstances, you haven't played by the rules. If you've married someone just to stay in the country and you're not together anymore and you haven't notified the Home Office, you're not playing by the rules. You haven't played by the rules. You know, there'll be lots of things in there. I mean, I think the, the main thing will be um, criminal records, but I believe it's not going to be blanket thing. You know how many people that 500,000 who they're claiming, how many people are waiting for their indefinite leave to remain, who've paid and who are waiting, who have done all the paperwork, who are legal. The only thing that's not making them legal is the fact that the Home Office is dragging their feet. They're dragging their feet because they want to deport their asses. So that, that, that would protect those people. Amnesty would protect those people because they are legally in the country and through no fault of their own. And as long as the application has gone through, the Home Office can't do anything about them. They can't ship them out because they're here illegally. I mean, legally, even though they don't have the paperwork, but they're disadvantaged because the Home Office is taking so long. So they're unable to access jobs. They're unable to access housing. They're unable to access NHS all of those kind of things. So that's who the amnesty is going to be good for. So don't put yourself out there and think, oh yeah, you know, we're going to get amnesty. Oh, I'm going to apply for amnesty thinking, oh yeah, you're just setting yourself up to be deported, love. Everybody jumps on the bandwagon. You're setting yourself up to be deported because you may disqualify. So think about what it means when they say play by the rules. When these politicians speak, listen to all the words. Don't just take out the main thing and, think, and, and run with it because it's in the detail that makes the difference and that can, you know, make the difference between you being set up or not even set up, you're setting yourself up because you haven't been paying attention. But that is the difference. That's what's going to make the difference. So I'm just kind of putting it out there. Like I said, it's just my thoughts because, um, you know, I like to cling on to these little details. I think they're very important. And yeah, um, I don't even know if this is worth needing to read. There's a couple of things I would like to um, add. Um, so amnesty, when it comes out, is going to be for those who lived here for 15 years, so long as they've played by the rules. Um, and they've lived here legally for 15 years. So that's going to be equivalent to, yeah, it's just going to be like those people who are on um, indefinite leave to remain and every 10 years they have to renew their application and it's costing them a bomb and blah, blah, blah. Um, 
He says, I think if people, this is what Boris Johnson says, I think if people have been here for a very long time and they, have, and they haven't fallen foul of the law and they have played by the rules, all I say is we look into it. The thing is, you've got two sets of people. It's going to rub up people the wrong way because there are some people who, regardless of whether people have played by the rules or not, they want immigrants out. So, you so you know, so he he comes over like if he's a genuine person in that statement, he's quite a fair person because you do have bias in the Home Office. We know that. So in that statement, as long as you've played by the rules, he is willing to give you amnesty. I don't see what the uproar is. He's not saying if you're illegal in the courts. I think he should expand on it a little bit. So that people actually understand. But, you know, it wouldn't cause a sensationalism. It does if he did expand on it. A lot of these words and these things that happen are to create fora, is to create discontent, is to create discord. You know, and it's to create enmity. You know, you know, it's all prophesied. So that's what this is about. You know, a lot of people have been saying they don't like Boris Johnson anyway. So this is just to add fuel to the fire. By him saying that, he's going to add fuel to the fire because it's going to look like he's pro-immigrant. That's what it's going to look like. It's going to look like he's for the immigrants. But I, I, you know, I'm not quite sure where he's coming from. But if he's coming from the place I think he's coming from, that is fair. If he's coming from a place where immigrants who are legally in the country and who can't get their paperwork through some frustrating process, then this is fair to give them amnesty because they've been paying every 10 years, thousands and thousands. And it's the fault of the Home Office why they haven't got their paperwork. So I think if that is the case, then that's good. Um, like I said, I think if you've overstayed, is that playing by the rules? Because, you know, when they're talking about illegal immigrants, it covers a lot of different things and being undocumented. When you think of those young people whose parents haven't registered them, that is that is that means they're undocumented, even though they're born in the country. So technically they shouldn't come under the banner of illegal immigrants, but they are being called illegal or undocumented because they don't have their paperwork. These are the people that Boris Johnson is offering amnesty to, in my opinion. He's not offering it to all and sundry, so don't get your knickers in a twist for all of those who are worried about immigration. Um, I think I've said that um and you have to think about what stopped you what is stopping you now from getting your paperwork from getting indefinite leave to remain you're in the country now what is preventing you from becoming legal you have to put that in your mind and think okay there i can't be i can't apply to be legal because of a b c d and e now, that A, B, C, D and E will be not, it could be by not playing by the rules. And if that's the case, the amnesty is not going to help you. Um, yes, yeah, so I've said, I believe that it's going to apply to young people who are born in the UK, but were not registered by their parents and are therefore undocumented. The Windrush generation's extended family, along with those who are on various forms of leave to remain. And I believe those are the ones that will qualify for amnesty. Um, Johnson has a long history of calling for an amnesty dating back to his time as London's mayor when he commissioned a, a May 2009 report on the issue. This looked... Ah, uh, should I leave it? This looked at the economic impact of an amnesty for migrants with no criminal convictions who had lived in the UK for five years. Their report did look at how a regularisation scheme would operate, but was essentially 
favourable to the proposal. Um, what else have I got? I've highlighted a few things and I'm only going to speak on the highlighted parts. At the height of the Windrush scandal in April 2018, Johnson had a tiff with the, Prime Minister, with the then Prime Minister, Theresa May, on the issue, demanding an amnesty for anyone here for 10 years, provided they were squeaky clean. You see? Squeaky clean. And I don't understand how they can be squeaky clean and not be legal already. What is preventing them, if they're squeaky clean, from being legal in the country there's something that we're missing so please bear that in mind there's something that we're missing when he's saying provided they're squeaky clean because to me if you're squeaky clean why aren't you why haven't you got your paperwork why aren't you legally in the country why aren't you documented a later statement from Downing Street made clear that an amnesty policy was not under consideration. So Johnson appears committed to the idea in one form or another, but would it make a big difference? A radical pardon or tweaks to existing rules? Much depends on the means by an amnesty. The word conjures up visions of an instant one of pardon for all irregular migrants in the UK, followed by an immediate residence documentation. In its purest form, an amnesty would legally declare that anyone currently in the UK without a visa automatically has permission to live here going forward. And that is not the case. That is sensationalism and biased media. The reality is likely to look very different based on a few details Johnson has actually given. He has consistently referred to, one, a clean criminal record, and two, qualifying period of UK residence. So he's not just talking flippantly out of his head, he's giving it some thought. Um... On the second point, his position has steadily hardened. In 2009, he suggested five years of residence to qualify. This increased to 10 years, then 12 years. And his latest suggestion is that only migrants who have lived in the UK for 15 years will be eligible. Further, when you strip away the word amnesty, you're left with an idea that is hardly a new one in the UK. The first example that springs to mind was work by the Home Office Legacy Team between 2006 and 2011. Created a clear, it was created to clear a huge backlog of asylum claims. It resulted in about 80% of active cases being granted leave. I didn't know that. Because they're saying it's never happened before. But it has. Anecdotally, this was more often due to the length of residence and family ties rather than the merits of the asylum claim. The second example was the 14 year long residence rule in force from 2003 until 2012. Migrants with 14 years continuous residence in the UK with or without permission were eligible for indefinite leave to remain. A criminal record was not an automatic bar but the Home Office did perform a Public Interest Balancing Act, taking into account personal history, including any offending. As of 2011, some 9,000 people had benefited from the rule. Mm -hmm. This is interesting. The third and most recent example is the current long residence provisions in the immigration rules. These are discussed in detail in Collins Post here, but in short, there are diff I don't know who Colin is. There are diff but I'm going to put the link where I got this um, from, extracted this from. There are different residence period required depending on age. Under 18s is seven years, 18 to 24 inclusive, half your life, and 25 and over 20 years. That's the residence period. Repeat, repeat criminal offenders or those with a single sentence lasting at least 12 months are barred under the suitability requirements. And remember, repeat com criminal offenders is anybody who's committed a crime more than three times. Could even be two, depending on the discretion. But 
Those are repeat offenders. Successful applicants receive renewable lead, leave lasting two and a half years after 10 years of lawful residence. They qualify for indefinite leave to remain. And one final amnesty in quotes category deserves a brief mention. Children born in the UK qualify for immediate British citizenship if they live here for the first 10 years of their life. I wonder why they would call that amnesty though. Because technically, because I mean technically so they should I would have thought if they're born here I guess it depends on the circumstances oh yeah I guess it depends on the circumstances because remember we had a point I think it was in the 80s when a lot of people came over here and had babies thinking it would make them give them eligibility to stay in the country and because of that, that is why they, um, in 1983, they decided that they wouldn't, you weren't automatically British because you, you were born in the country. It was because of people who just came over here, took advantage of the system, got pregnant, had a baby, and they got into the country based on that child. So they stopped that. So I guess um, it is a kind of amnesty for those children then. Um, all in all, Ben Johnson's proposal sounds very similar to existing provisions. The headline 15 year period of residence is an improvement for those who must currently wait for 20 years. Yeah, because you've got 20 years for leave to remain, so that'd be reduced by five and would also reduce the documentary burden on applicants who must find hard evidence of all those years residents not merely assert it so of course you're going to need all the evidence the same way even under an amnesty and i don't know how much work that additional work that would give the home office i don't know if it's less work or more work because they still have to go through the process completing forms and submitting evidence and what have you but what would it mean for those who currently qualify based on shorter periods such as children Further, his previous insistence that people must be squeaky clean or actually more restrictive than current provisions, which permit very low level offending. The biggest risk would be if Johnson favoured a genuine one off amnesty rather than a rolling long residence qualification. Where would this leave people who have reached 14 years, for example, at the time of the amnesty? But this seems unlike they're, un they're unlucky, aren't they? They're one year out. It's like, you know, with the pensions. There are some people, because they were born a couple of years later, they have to wait six years for the pension. This is a similar situation. 14 years, you're unlucky. You have to be here 15 years. That's a simple answer. Um, at the t what? Oh, let me just read that sentence again. Where would this leave people who have reached 14 years, for example, at the time of any amnesty? But this seems unlikely based on his comments to date, which suggests support for an ongoing right to regularise rather than any single time limited amnesty. In summary, Johnson's idea is far less radical than it sounds at first. For some, the reduced residence period would be a gift, while others would be worse off under such a scheme. But without clear, concrete proposals, it's far too early to say what this might all mean in practice. Still, a prominent conservative politician declaring himself pro-immigrant at least makes a welcome change compared with the recent past. It remains to be seen how long that lasts, if he gets the top job. And that's all for now. I hope you found it useful.